I'm Sir Flobojan Thunderhammer. And I'm Teflon Frosthammer. And I'm Cabbage Tidehammer. And this is Whack. If Ampguard Knighthood means anything, you can't knife a motherfucker and keep it. And the thing that people need to understand essentially about arts and sciences events is that your scores don't matter. You want a black phoenix or a white phoenix? Jeez, language, man. We're yeah, on right. a freaking podcast, for fuck's sake. Mind-blowing experience, right? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Act, where we discuss topics important to the Guard community at large and talk with interesting people from around the foam-fighting world. It is disturbing how well those <laughs> fit your face. You look like such a shithead. <laughs> <laughs> You look like the South Park biker guys. Like, <laughs> no, I'm PC principal. Oh fuck! <laughs> uh, I mean, I went. <laughs> it's just so for all of everyone like audio only. He's got man, yeah. savage. He's got hit by Brazil. The cream rises to the head. top, brother. <laughs> I might have went a little Hogan there. <laughs> this week exactly. we got Hogman on. It's been a long time. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. How are you guys doing? Doing good. well. Doing, doing well. well. Doing well. Uh, you, you look like you look you look like Randy Macho Man Savage actually got old. <laughs> <laughs> no, that dude's heart exploded. Did, did you hear how he died? No, which I, is terrible, by the way. I was yeah, I, I, was, I yeah. dude. He was a he was a hero of mine uh, growing up. So the uh, story that I read was that he was getting head. <laughs> while driving. This and is going to be heart, a great podcast. And he had a heart attack, <laughs> like no shit. That's like every woman's nightmare. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, given roadhead and then dying in a car then, crash. Yeah, right. I mean, that's how yeah. I want to go. <laughs> Horrifying. I like, but uh, she doesn't, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I, she could go too, but then she bit down. God, what what movie? What series is it? American happens? Gods. American Gods. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, I was trying to think. Oh, that's that is how thing. the opening mm-hmm. goes. Yeah. Wow, the, this is an Amphard podcast. This, huh? went, it, <laughs> this went, I don't know if we're going to have to we this one. We went fast. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, this is just... This we're is approaching us. our 100th episode, man. We don't do reshoots anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys been, you guys have been using the same intro for six months. We need, we need one thing. Man. I'm too lazy to change it at this point. Like, <laughs> Hey, Sumi, you can, you can change it if you want. We won't care. I'll send you all the files. Good luck, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he All actually right. was talking about that. Did you see in the... Yeah, I saw okay. that. Yeah, we should totally do that, though. At least All for right. the YouTube side. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're two minutes in, <laughs> and so far we've talked about Roadhead and <laughs> Macho Man, Macho Man Savage, South Park. South yeah, Park. Dead wrestlers. It's been wrestlers. It's been a good one so oh, far. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Can no. we make a household <laughs> called Dead Wrestlers Society? we got to let Lauren in. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's a big maybe there. <laughs> Lauren, if you're listening to this, make a spell favors. <laughs> if 99 episodes ago you had told me this is what I'd be doing today, I would not have started this fucking <laughs> project with some people. Is this, is this the actual 100th episode? No, no, no this, this is, is 99. 99. Yeah, you'll be 99. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're close. you're one away from greatness. <laughs> oh, <I'm> really, <laughs> it's like one piece. This shit's never going to fucking celebration episode. Right? <laughs> the confetti on the wrong episode. <laughs> <laughs> so... We had you on a while back, and we were talking about different recruitment drives, different things what? to hype up uh, foam fighting. Uh, Come Try LARP, of course, is one of the things you're best known for, uh, right behind being the best druid in uh, all of Winter's Edge. <laughs> Hey, what? <laughs> you, you You're gotta, not wrong. No, you got you to gotta top gear it, man. But, Some say he's the best druid. Oh, yeah, sorry. In the world. In the world. <laughs> In the world. Uh, but uh, you had contacted us and said that you thought it might be a good idea to do an update episode because there's a lot that's happened since then. And oh. uh, we all agreed because uh, we couldn't find anyone else to come on. So <laughs> That's right. It makes it, it makes it easy when the hosts are so bad they can't even... Yeah, guess, right? Like, yeah right. <laughs> coming up on the hunger, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so... I did. Uh, I, uh, w- w- when we had done this in the past, I had ran coming, coming out of COVID, I guess it was in April of 21 or 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I went ahead and ran a Facebook ad for our local park and we saw some success. We had, we had really, the big thing was, was we had people driving from too far away. Right. So the, the locals 
weren't coming out, but we had people coming from, you know, an hour and a half and two hours away to, to come out and play. And unfortunately it wasn't doing us much good because those folks are very unlikely to be coming back from, you know, 80 miles away. That, so that's, that was kind of problematic. So that's why I wanted to kind of delay things. And since then we've run at least two that I know of, maybe three, uh, one up in Wisconsin, I think, uh, that have been quite successful uh, as far as bringing people out. We're seeing people come out, cost of about $10 per head in ad spends, right? So if you go to Facebook and you run a $300 ad, you can expect to see, you know, roughly 30 people show. It might be 27, it might be 35, whatever, but somewhere in there at about $10 per head. And uh, about one in, you know, four of those people end up coming back and sticking around for, you know, six weeks or longer. And uh, it, work, it works out pretty well, I think. That's cool to get the, the actual monetary uh, investment on it because I think a lot of people are just kind of shooting in the dark for recruitment and sometimes wasting time, sometimes being successful. So I think, I think it's one of the things that uh, people don't really think about when they go and they make flyers and then they stand at a con all day. Uh, I think if people really look at the number of folks that are at a con, right, so you bring your entire park out and it could be eight people, you know, show up to, to volunteer – and they're there for a whole day, and then you spent two or three hundred dollars in, you know, art and cards and signups and desks and you know whatever it costs at the con. You end up spending three hundred bucks anyway, and you might get four hundred people to sign your sheet and say that they, you know, swung a sword and played ant guard. But then you might get one person that shows up. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have you have eight people spending an entire day doing something. You spend all this time making these flyers, and handing out these flyers, and then getting all these signings. But the actual results at the end of the day is. Nobody is long term at your park. Uh, now, that's not to say that exceptions don't happen and that sometimes you get two or three and, you know, things like that. And some cons do quite well. But uh, looking at actual logistical numbers on it, bang for your buck, uh, I, I think Facebook is a, is a much better, a much better buy. And TikTok, we're going to know soon, TikTok just released a nearby feature uh for oh, advertising ooh. as well yeah so you have your you know your for you page the following page so you're looking at you know the people that you follow and then the for you page and there'll be another one called nearby actually and we, so we should be so excited that that's coming out that should have existed a long ass time ago <laughs> we're like ooh, well, cool but it, you know with a, with a platform as massive as tiktok is and they're just rolling this out slowly but tick tiktok uh, I think it is in Gen Z. They've just passed Google in search, yeah, meaning that more <laughs> more people in Gen Z are searching TikTok than they search Google. And that's for everyday stuff, right? That's kind of interesting. Well, Google search yeah. has also been getting progressively and progressively worse. I could do a whole separate podcast on just that. But... <laughs> right. Yeah. But but the but the point is you can you can reach a nearby audience for free in entertaining or interesting ways that you could never do on Google, never. You just don't have the ability to, to reach them randomly. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas this is, the, the cool thing about TikTok is it's it just all of a sudden, if you have interesting content, all of a sudden it's in front of somebody. And that, that'll never happen on mm -hmm. Google. You have no way to, you know, if they don't know what they're looking for, they, don't, they, yeah. they can't find you. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's and, no power of suggestion. Well, and let's be honest too, Unless you are really, really talented at setting up Google AdWords, which mm -hmm. most people aren't, you could create one of the best ads that foam fighting has ever seen and toss it up on Google, and no one will ever see it. Correct. Um, and, and they have to be on Google looking for LARPing as an entertainment. Yeah, they have to search something adjacent to... Yeah. I, I think that this is the strength that cons... Uh, and, and flyers have had previously like in mm -hmm. in the older generation in, in amp guard is a lot of people join because it's a it's a see and do thing right i'll see some people doing it and go oh that looks kind of neat or weird or different let's go over there mm -hmm. and check it out and see what's going on um and i and, and, go, go ahead, ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> i was gonna say I, I think that that is what things like tiktok and uh and well applied Facebook ads do now is you're you're still able to get that type of exposure. Like come try LARP at its heart is really just introducing people to what we do in the same way that they would have seen it if they were driving by a park and go, I wonder what those dudes are doing. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it's the, you, you got to hook them to cook them kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's kind of what I do. And the other content creators do is they get somebody interested and then 
all they have to do it they're literally three clicks away on uh TikTok to coming to a park's Facebook page it's it's mm -hmm. very very quickly can they land inside your Facebook page um and that's where the real power comes in on that side of things now something I, what I was so rudely interrupting you with was the uh people people coming to the cons like I said you might get 400 sign-ins right but it's way better to get somebody at your actual park location to play than it is to have somebody at a different spot, right? So that's why when we when we talk about running these Facebook ads, it's important that you have it on your regular park day. So if you're Saturday at two o'clock, you want to have it Saturday at two o'clock, you know, at you know, whatever municipal park you're at or whatever it is at that location, and that's where you want to have your event uh, because you want people just to be able to say, look, we're here at the same time next week. Mm -hmm. come on out you don't you don't have to you remove all of those weird barriers of well where are they going to be at how do i get there i don't know what's going on and all, you're always in the same spot and so that i think that really helps with the retention of you know that one in four one in five people that come out for that first that first visit yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to bash necessarily the cons and stuff but like yeah absolutely you, not. you don't it, know it has a place yeah you don't know where they're from either and uh, like you said, you had the problem with people driving in from too far away, not really uh, contributing to it. It's tenfold or more uh, on cons oftentimes, uh, unless it's and, a specifically local con. Right. And, and it well, it's interesting, too, like the Tampa Bay con. And I'm just going to I'm absolutely just going to contradict everything that I just said here <laughs> real quick. But the, the Tampa Bay uh, Comic Con happened, I don't know, six weeks ago or something. Mm -hmm. And Matt Marshall down there had an excellent showing of to folks, hundreds and hundreds of people. But they're from all over the country. But he pre-made Come Try LARP business cards with a QR code on them. Oh, uh, nice. So. Yeah, so so what happens is these people take this card home and then they can scan that QR code whenever they fly back to wherever they're from. And it doesn't matter if, you know, just same thing with everything else, if it's, you know, Amp Guard or DAG or wherever they're at, it's it's effectively the, all the same stuff, at least to a brand new person mm -hmm. uh, coming out. So it doesn't matter where they land. And, you know, that gets back to the beauty of that, of all that functionality. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, Cabbage had an idea to do QR code stuff a long, long time ago, uh, and I think that it's still. Uh, I, I think that especially after the pandemic, people have become more used to using it all of the time. Like mm -hmm. I think people were used to using it before, but now because like every menu at a restaurant or something is all QR code, that it's not as. See, I, haven't, I haven't seen that one time. I must live in. Well, I live in Kentucky. They, <laughs> no, dude, they did uh, it to Waffle House here. They did. Yeah, a Waffle, Waffle House, House had a QR code. Yeah, I, I, somebody put up a tweet said there. I'm with the boomers on this one. I'm not scanning your fucking QR code for a menu. <laughs> Bring me a paper menu. That's right. I mean, it's a waffle house. It. Do you need a menu? <laughs> right. Um. So you uh, you ran one of these recently. Um, mm -hmm. The tell me a little bit about it. What was the message that you were pushing, and how did it go? Uh, the, the, the message is effectively just a copy paste to all of them. And in, in my opinion, you know, if you're looking to run one of these, you should just copy paste my ad and run it because it, it works. It functions, right? You, we know exactly what you're going to get per dollar. Um, unfortunately on this one, we had a hiccup. I had not run an ad, uh, since the before times and, uh, my old credit card was saved in Facebook and everything runs a couple of days behind. So I only got about three days worth of ads put in. I spent about 140 bucks. And then I get this weird notification like a week later that says, Hey, your credit card's not working. If you want to update it, we'll, you know, do your ad again. And so I updated the credit card and then you know, my new credit card was like, Hey, this is, seems fraudulent. So I lost another two days there. <laughs> oh, so no. We ended up spending like $140, but we had like 13 people show up, uh, that had never played before. So that was great. Mm -hmm. Uh, keeping right to that, you know, $10 ahead thing. Uh, I know they had several that came back out. I don't know how many, unfortunately I did not get a chance today to get an update from them on exactly how many they've kept long-term, yeah. but I would imagine it's probably two or three with the 13 that show up if it's keeping, you know, in those numbers. And I know, um, Screech down in Everliving Woods had, I think, 35 show up. That sounds to right. His yeah. event. And he and he spent uh, right at $300 as well. So they, you know, Tracks. that number is is $10 ahead. And that's, that's really tough to beat for 
almost just having a regular park day. You know, you don't have to have, you don't have to buy a table. You don't have to, you know, buy a table at a con is what I'm saying. You, you mm-hmm. know, there's a lot less effort that goes into that. And you actually get to play Amp Guard at your park in your location. So there's a lot of extra. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Added value to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you can sell your swords directly to them too, right? So that's what Screech did. I, I don't think they ended up out of pocket at all. Oh, nice. They, yeah. He they, made they like a hundred swords. Yeah. It was something crazy. Close to it yeah. anyway. But he, I mean, he was selling those off, and I, my understanding is he came real close to breaking even uh, or making a little bit of money on on that whole thing, which is phenomenal to end up picking up some players and making money. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, something like that's good, too, because getting a lot of – it's hard. Getting new people is usually a trickle, right? So getting a lot of new people out on the same day because you've done this advertisement – you got. You have to have people to get people right. People feel more comfortable doing. You oh. know, you get the, the word weird of mouth thing. too. Yeah, uh, accompanied with people playing potentially. Like word of mouth is one of the bigger ones, mm-hmm. I think. But you have to get someone in front of you first, and that's where right. these things do really well. It seems. Yeah, and I think that we've talked about this before. But if your park decides to pick this up and run with it, and we're going to put links to stuff in the in the bottom here. Uh, the, any anything that you have at the end, uh, Hogman, that can that might help them out with this, we'll put links to. But if your park is going to do this, just a heads up: sit down with the entire park before the date and talk to everybody there and let them know that this is not a normal park day. No one cares if you win. You should be you should be just hamming things up. You know, let the newbies have fun. Uh, you know. It, this is how you get new people, right? You can't go out there and decide to dominate all of the first day newbies. Correct. And and they're they're going to have an energy that you're you're going to have a tough time matching. If you remember the first time you went out and went foam fighting, you were probably pretty hype even after you got home because of just all of that. I don't, I don't know how to put it, but the chutzpah, whatever, of just being <laughs> able to get out there and fight uh, like that, and then they're going to hold all of that in all, all of that energy. Uh, and you have to be aware of that. Right. So when you, you, you know, you might be playing team deathmatch, we play team deathmatch instead of ditch, right. We're simplifying things. So mm-hmm. they understand what is going on without using a whole bunch of in-game lingo. So you, you might be ditching for the first little while, and then you might take a five minute break, but that's it. You want to get, as soon as you see your new people getting up and starting to meander around and getting bored, you need to get back up and, you know, get on to your next battle game. Now you're going to play capture the flag. And then once uh, it's over with, sit down and take your break and go this, ahead. This sounds like an endorsement for cardio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. Some people were born to be Reeves, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is a slogan I want. I on found a my calling. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My reaving guild is called Run the Gains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, the big thing is, is, is they're, they're going to be full of energy. You want to make sure that you are, you're there and ready to match that. And if, if you go screaming to run across the field, you know, you can be as hammed up and say charge. But if you just yell, you will be surprised just what a goblin wah will do for everybody on the field um and because they're there for it man it i don't know they're they're into it it feels weird to you because you normally just walk across the field but if you run they're all going to run for you and with you and it is it is for the glory and they don't know any better man it is just it's good fun yeah the i love stuff like that too like we talk about the the energy that newbies uh, bring a lot on the show, but dude, having having a large I've only been on a field once that had a large group of them start at the same time, uh, and that was nowhere near as as big as the group that Screech had uh, down at Ever Living right. Woods. I think it was maybe six people or so, but even that, even just having six people was crazy. Just the the level of uh, hype and excitement that I saw from some of our older players at. Uh, uh, at Radiant Valley was mm-hmm. really, really cool. Uh, yeah. That was like right as soon as we were starting to reopen too. I yeah, I remember. think so. I don't remember the exact Yeah, I don't remember details, the exact but, yeah. date, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, so uh, do you have any kind of strategy when you release these? Are you Is there particular like dates or beginning of the month, end of the month sort of stuff that you look at? 
it's not so much that it's more uh what day is going to be most convenient for not just your park but you want to try to get you know the two or three parks closest around you to come and support if you can even if it's just two or three people from each park um if you have 35 new people show up you've got that's 18 people versus 18 people not to mention who you know knows how to play but these are all people who have never picked up a stick before which by the way we'll go ahead and say no pole arms no yeah. uh no archery no bow and arrows no pole arms it, you know flow is fine sword and board is fine single short is fine all that good stuff but you want to keep the big mega dangerous stuff out of the new because they don't know any better man they're just going to be out there blasting people in the face <laughs> yeah. yeah i'll even say no flails we yeah. should just say no flails people, as a matter of principle. But I mean. People are just going to get people. Are, I'm sorry, madness. Uh, the people are just going to get hit in the face if you bring uh, flails or. I mean, they're going to hit in the face anyways, but definitely. Right. That's a that's a legal dark on hit, by the way. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> flails to the head are legal in yep. dark on. Oh, that's I'd, the thing. We were going to go play dark on, weren't we? Yeah, you guys bailed on me. Yeah, we're going to go play. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I, Darkon. I want to play Darkon so bad. Dude. I do, it too. It looks like so it looks much fun. Yeah, really interesting. Total sidebar, I loved oh so many things about the way that they described Darkon. I like that Magic has kind of this tangible time cost yeah. to mm -hmm. doing it, and it has a great effect on, on what's going on, too. Uh, I, we should check back in with those uh I was about to say, I think, I think Fikes, who was the, the lady on the interview with us uh, during that episode, got like her eighth or ninth warrior at this point. She's getting uh, she real did. close she, to warrior, Warlord. Yeah, so uh -huh. they. The, I know that they posted up the event where she got her eighth and may have gotten more since then. I don't know. Um, but she yeah. did pretty well at the CTL stuff too, didn't she? Yeah, she got, uh, I want to say, third in Sword and Board or Open. Oh, wow. I, have to, I haven't nice. I haven't looked at that yet. Oh. And then she won She won the non -mints. Yes. Is she the lady that broke her stick? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was trying to think. I was like, I swear I've seen her in one of your videos recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she was the one, uh, the broken stick. And then I just did a the compilation for her winning the non mints of all of her. Not all of them, but several of her wins throughout the tourney. Gotcha. Oh, maybe that'll, maybe uh, that'll get her... To her uh, next uh, home yeah, kingdom you know, of fikes, sure. maybe <laughs> if you're listening to this. Um, okay, so making sure that you get it on a good day. None of the big scary weapons. Uh, extra water. Try to have mm -hmm. people from other parks there, if for no other reason than have more people that know what they're doing. That's the volunteer base. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you want to have a good point man too. Uh, let me let me kind of touch on that real quick. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, you yeah. want to have the the a uh, person that is not afraid to run up and shake hands with every person they meet, right? You just that the guy is super friendly. <laughs> yeah, you want to have you want to have that person as kind of a point man, and what you that individual is pretty much in charge of the entire day, right? So what they're going to do is watch that park entrance as people come up, go and introduce themselves, and then they will take walk them over to the sign-in table, kind of explain what's going to happen. We're going to have you sign in, sign a waiver, and then I'm going to introduce you to somebody else who's going to teach you how to fight. And so you want to just hold their hand and walk them through the whole process so they're comfortable, right? And then the people that show them how to fight are going to take that group, boyfriend and girlfriend or three friends or just that single person, whatever it is, but you're going to keep them all together and you're going to get them with one amp garter. And that, that amp garter is going to teach them, this is how you fight, real basic stuff, shot of the body or two limbs and you're dead. And once that group kind of understands what's going on, then you walk them over and then they can start playing team deathmatch. And then that's where they kind of get integrated in that real quick, you know, matchup that is ditch before they play that for 15 or 20 minutes. And then they go on to play capture the flag. Right. So they're kind of graduating through the tutorial, but it's real important to have that front man literally shake hands with every single person that comes through. Uh, People that come out, they're unsure of what is going on. They, they don't know if they want to really. They'll, they'll be very timid. But if you can get somebody to introduce themselves and then get them with a buddy uh, in order to keep them engaged and entertained until they're comfortable with actually swinging, you'll have a much better chance of that person actually stepping onto the field to play. And then really in the end coming back because they feel like they've met you know some folks and they know what's going on and all of that stuff. Uh, it's also real important for all of all of those people that are there to, you know, make sure they introduce themselves to everybody that's new. Hey, yeah. you know, I'm Flo. We're here every week. We'd love to have you back. You know, 
what brings you out this is during break time or whatever but have casual conversations what you know why did you why did you want to come do this and then maybe kind of open and explain a little bit about the game and and touch on that to their you know the things that they're looking for and one thing that i want to share too because this has actually happened when we brought newbies out and it wasn't I won't even blame any of the people that were involved in doing this, but save your old war stories for after they've been in for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's I a, mean, you're absolutely correct. There's a time and place. Oh, no, mm -hmm. why, why are you looking at me? I mean, it could have been anyone that did that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is really a day to for everybody to be, I'm going to say, on your best behavior. Um, like, you know, these people might be coming out and thinking, you know, it, it might just be some dude that's 26 that comes out, but he may have a wife and kids that he is looking to be able to bring out as well. People may have partners, significant others or something that they want to expose to this as well. Uh, families. Families at, at our park have become a much, much bigger deal over the years and to varying different degrees depending on the time of year and the, the people and things like that. But... Mm -hmm. We've definitely tried to foster uh, an environment where if Cabbage wants to uh, bring his little boy out, he can, and that's going to be totally cool. You yeah. know, it, the the kid's going to have something to do. It's not going to be uh, uh, boring, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that the parents can feel comfortable doing that. So, right, absolutely. Um, the now, uh, you. Uh, do you do any kind of prize? Maybe that's a bad way to put it. Uh, for people coming mm -hmm. out, do you any do you do any kind of like little token or something like raffle that? Raffle or something. Raffle. You, you could. I. <clears throat> some people. Uh, I, I've given away swords in the past to people that I was pretty confident would be coming back, um, and and that gives them you know kind of a way to buy into it in that way. I like. I really like that Screech was selling them. I, I didn't even think to sell them you know, the first week, uh, the first time that I had ran one, but Screech selling them, especially turning a profit like that is a big deal. Once they spend money, they're invested, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if yeah. it's $5 or $20. And especially if you get, you know, two buddies that bought some and then they, you know, they went home and played. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All freaking, yeah, granted, they don't know what they're doing and whatever, but they were beating the hell out of each other all week long <laughs> waiting to come back on Saturday. <laughs> I mean, that's the investment that you need to keep it going. I feel like so. Right. And, and again, you pointed out the monetary investment, like that, that's commitment, right? At, at some level, they're committing to the future with it because they spent money on it typically. So I think there's some kind of uh, advertising or marketing uh, concept with that. And I can't remember what it's called, but, you know, it's, I mean, it's, a little it's, bit of like a sunk cost thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that uh, Sir Gillen always did really, really well, too, is when new Shake people came out down for ten dollars. <laughs> he only shook you down for ten I guess he liked me. <laughs> no, uh, one of the things that he always did really, really well is when you were new, if we were doing a fighter practice or something else, he would always make sure and invite whoever the new person was and say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, on, on Wednesdays, we meet over at uh, this park over here uh, at the big barn. And we it's just fighter practice. There won't be any of the, like, capture the flag stuff. This is just about getting a little bit better. But if you'd like to come over, you know, there's usually a group of 10 to 15 uh, of us, maybe more with some of the new people coming out. And it's just about learning the game. Uh, you know, some right. basic shots and things like that. He was always so, so good about doing that. And it made people feel like they were part of the community, right? Oh, right. I'm getting the invite. Yeah, it's like kidnapping. Yeah. Take them to a second location. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, be the beauty of it is, especially in these Facebook ads, right, is when they like something or they click going on that uh -huh. event, you you now have your little meat hooks in them. And so now you can spend five dollars to boost a post and then target directly all of the people who liked your page or liked your event or whatever it might be and go in and retarget all of those people and if you talk to them about going ahead and joining the facebook group th this is real important you should always ask everybody to pull out their cell phone and join the facebook group while they're there because once they're in that group each week you know if you meet on saturday make a post on thursday make a post on friday and then make a post two hours before park day but those folks will see that and say oh yeah that's right i'm you know supposed to be going out here on saturday to do this yeah Heraldo has been doing a pretty good job because they just started um emerald winds again i think and he's yeah. been really good about making sure hey uh everyone we're meeting at whatever park 
uh, at this time mm. on this day again. Here's what I'll we're see playing. everyone here. Here's what we're playing. I think is on it too and stuff like that. So like it's a really good idea just on a general level too. It's cool like to see Thursday. Hey, we're gonna have you know, like two class games and this, that, and the other. So me as someone who wants class game knows. Oh, cool! I'm gonna bring my stuff and actually use it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the 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 one thing I'll caution you with uh, in the beginning, especially right after you run that ad, keep everything try to keep your LARP jargon to a minimum. Sure. Right. So, you know, you're going to play capture the flag or escort the payload or whatever it is, instead of, you know, ditch or heavy object or ring the bell. Nobody knows what the hell any of those are. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so it's, it's important to keep all that lingo to a minimum. Yeah. Cabbage has talked about this before when like to the, we, there was a group of us, uh, maybe like three or four of us that had just gone out and were eating somewhere. And we had had a couple of new people come up and I don't remember who he was talking to, but he he said uh, he's like uh, he said, "Hey, can can I give you some uh, some constructive criticism?" I'm like, yeah, sure. Like you started talking about this, and your energy was amazing. Like they could feel how excited you were, but you were using jargon that we all know, but they had no mm -hmm. idea. Like I watched the life drain the from their over. eyes. Yep. Yeah, uh, because they had no idea what you were talking about and then you started talking about some really famous you know serpent knights and sword knights again they don't know who any of those people are they don't know what a serpent knight or a sword knight is so uh you know just be very thirty thousand foot with the way that you talk about everything Correct. Mm -hmm. referees and yeah referees and yeah mm -hmm. yeah or, or introduce people you know, hey, everybody, these are going to be our referees. This is Cabbage, and this is Teflon. Uh, we call them Reeves. So they are going to be the ones that are uh, helping people uh, with their scoring and shot calling and things like that today. So everybody say hi to our Reeves. They'll have a right. Reeves stick. Make stuff like that if you're going to have yeah. new people out. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So <clears throat> we talked about... I. I do you have anything else uh, that you want to talk about with uh, with the drive? Because I actually want to ask you how your event went as well. Um, thinking real quick to make sure that I didn't. We'll have links below for you. If you have questions, uh, I, I'm not going to put my first personal Facebook page on this, but leave a, leave <laughs> I'll a message put it here, here for and, and they'll give it. Or, or <laughs> cut, cut, go to you can go to uh, the Come Try Art Facebook page. Shoot that a message directly. Uh, there's a group, the the Come Try Art Facebook group, uh, which is a great place to come in and ask questions specifically about recruitment and uh, to grab some media uh, if you want to go out and you know use some media to to grab folks with as well. But that's it. What what did you want? What did you want to ask me about the event? <laughs> so the event happened. Uh, first off, Come Try LARP has an event every single year, mm -hmm. um, and you just recently had this one. We mentioned uh, uh, that uh, Fikes won uh, one of the tournaments uh, that you were holding. But what is the Come Try LARP event for those that don't know? The the Come Try LARP national tournament, as we call it, it was going to be the invitational, but then we weren't inviting anybody. Everybody was just going to come. <laughs> so now it's the, 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 the Come Try LARP national tournament. Um, it's a uh, it's a stick duck stick jock centric event uh so that the the purpose for my and the reason i run it is so that i can get footage that i can then turn into recruitment ads right that's the, that's the only reason this is happening um you know in doing so though i'm creating an environment for folks that are fighter centric that want to come out and enjoy excellent night ditching you know the lights are absolutely incredible uh, and then a tournament that is set up in design and is not in a hurry. It is an all day thing. We don't have to get done for the two o'clock battle game. You know, we don't have, we, there is no pressing issue because the field is going to be taken. The only reason we are there is to have this tournament. And I kind of like it. Some other folks do too. It, it seems to be a good thing and growing and we're excited for it. And I mean, as a it, kingdom, it, you might, look into doing it that way in some ways too like following that that format for those tournament fighters and stuff because it kind of proves in in one way that a uh, an event centered around the tournament is successful or can be successful i mean we did it as rv yeah like just as a single park we did that and it had a huge turnout mm -hmm. yeah yeah um this is also uh not amp guard not 
Dag, not Bell. It's kind of a, uh, a multicultural sort of game. Uh, yes. And uh, the uh, do you have the dates for next year yet? Do you know when it's going to happen? Pro- probably going to be the same weekend in August, which was the 19th through the 21st this time. So whatever that equates to next year, it's most likely going to be that weekend. The, the specific reason for that is a school starts that weekend. That's the first weekend that that property will not have any kids on it for because that property is used as a kids camp oh, okay. uh, for for especially throughout the summer and uh so th- there won't be anybody else there that's the that's the big reason gotcha and uh so this is all of the standard tournament formats that you do there this is uh you know you're you'll have single flow sword board uh you mentioned a couple uh, of different brackets is why i ask yeah, we it's a uh, and we're gonna we're gonna sit down and have a long conversation with everybody that has been to either tournament, whether it was the first one or the second one, and kind of hammer out a rule set. You know, as you were saying, it's not dagger here, it's not amp card. There, you know, we have a, a a mix and match of things, and some of it looks good, and some of it doesn't, quite honestly. And that's just part of you know figuring out how things should look. You know, like this year in the open category, we we are we were allowing red weapons, but as it turns out, we didn't allow red weapons to break shields because an amp guard, you can't do that, right? So the dagger here guys were like, well, wait a minute, we don't get to break shields. And the amp guard guys were like, yeah, that's right. And so, <laughs> it, you know, and, and it's just, a, you know, it's a different background for those different games. And so we need to figure out, you know, kind of where do we want to be? You know, do we really even want an open category? Because that ends up just being, you know, either red or sword and board category two. You know, it's, it's part two of either one of those things. And so do we want to take that out and put in, you know, a Florentine? What, you know, what, what do we yes, want we to do? Yes, we do. <laughs> right. And so there, 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 are, there are a lot of different things. But single sword and board, open, non-mens, and red is what we did this year, plus an archery category and a four-man on Friday night. Nice. I like the, uh, I like the four horsemen tournaments. I like your archery tournament. I like the way that, it's, that it's set up. You sent that to I, me, and then we, I didn't get to do it at, uh, at that one event. Symposium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I forgive coming, you. It's a, <laughs> it's a. It's a good. It's a good term. The format um, is very competitive for archery, which, in, in a positive way, it's easy to read. It's easy to understand. Uh, it, you know, it, just like anything else, it is. It's a standardized thing, so you know exactly what you're going to do before you get there. It's not like you'll have targets set up at these odd locations, and you have no idea what you're going to be shooting at before you get there, and you know, all of this wildness, it's, you're shooting your competitor and it's a thing of speed and accuracy Mm -hmm. and whoever hits the most and does it the quickest is going to be the winner. Yeah. Easier on the people that are running it as well, because you don't have to bring as much hardware with you uh, in the form of uh, targets of some kind, or you don't have to just like a read would be for a stick tournament. There is no, they don't need to bring anything. You know, the, the archer themselves is going to bring, six arrows in their bow and they're fighting an opponent as opposed to a target. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Archery tournaments. I got to say this, are, are like, they're, they're like, <laughs> it's like when you're shooting at a target, it's like pelling, right? It just doesn't, I don't know. It, 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 I understand like there's the, the mental game of the time aspect of, I got to hurry up and hit this before, you know, Joe did. But at the same time, it's like, it is not the same thing as actually shooting at somebody who's shooting at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I much prefer the more combat oriented archery tournaments. Um, yeah. I don't know. I get bored at the other ones. <laughs> yeah. You can, I, just, I don't even, I, I won't play them. They just, they, like you said, they just, they're, you get bored at everything. I mean, yeah. you're not wrong. <laughs> That's the ADD lizard brain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so not related to uh, so we'll we'll keep an eye out for the next uh, come try LARP event, not invitational, mm-hmm. uh, and right. we'll uh, we'll post <laughs> some stuff uninvitational yeah, and we'll post right. some stuff up about that. The I had one more thing that I wanted to talk to you uh, about. It'll probably take us close to time, and uh, this is just more on a personal note. You have been in Winter's Edge for uh, just a little bit now. You've got a chance to come to a couple of our events. Mm-hmm. Um, What's it been like changing uh, kingdoms? You know, there this has been something that a lot of people I think have gone through post uh, post COVID and stuff like that. As uh, uh, kingdom borders have shifted, 
uh, in mm -hmm. a lot of different places. Yeah, tell us how much rising winds suck. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I was going to ask you that's if that's what you were asking me. To no, so we yeah. actually, you know, uh, ink and patches just now went up to a tournament in rising winds. Uh, mm -hmm. Did pretty well. I think patches took fourth place overall, and ink either tied for first or got second or something like that. So ah. good on both of them for uh, for going yeah. up to rising winds and having a good showing there. Uh, yeah. And Rising Winds, thank you for uh, for hosting the uh, event that some of our people happen to come up to. Um, but no, this wasn't. I think, I think you're actually going to see you, when you're asking. I, I think I understand your question, so I'm going to cut you off real quick. Yeah, go ahead. on the tip of my tongue. I think what you're going to find here with us jumping borders back and forth is it's not as dramatic as everybody wants it to be. And and the good thing about that is is that I'm going to be bugging you guys to come up to Bridge Wars. Oh yeah, right? I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Here soon, I'm going to start clowning the triads. And uh, is it the Forsaken? What's the What's the other company there in the oh. in the green? Or I'm sorry, the yellow, uh, red, revolting. And black. He's one of them too, the Lucas. <laughs> what? The colorblind. I was making fun oh, yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but getting getting you know what I mean to go you guys into coming up to Bridge Wars, which is a you know it's a competitive event that they have every year, and it's a company versus company thing. Um, set number of people can be on the field at a time. And uh, if anybody else is there from your company and they're not quite, I'm going to say, good enough to, you know, to make the cut for the eight or 12 or 15 man team, whatever it might be, typically they end up running support uh, because it's necessary. And it's a competitive event. It's a blast. And uh, I think that's, I think that's to answer your question, what you're going to end up seeing more of is people pulling people up to these other events. The mm -hmm. same thing you'll see me, you know, yelling at my friends to come down to, you know, Alabama to go to events down in Alabama. Hopefully we'll bring it a little more central again. <laughs> uh, right. No, I understand. Yeah. yeah. But you, but you get my point. Though. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we still had, I don't know, six or eight people from mm -hmm. all the way up here in Kentucky. So coming down there to, to that event. We actually went to a bridge wars. Winter's edge did. We brought our okay. castle up, uh, yeah, nice. A long time ago. Um, that was we had a Bridge castle. Wars. It was a uh, it... winter war, I think. Right? No, it I, it wasn't a winter war. Pa okay. Totally, one hundred percent positive. Like it wasn't Noblander. No, it wasn't Noblander. <laughs> All right, um, and and you're right. It wasn't. Nah, uh, it it wasn't our castle. It was Florida's castle. But some of the Florida triads came up and brought that castle because um, Rising Winds had declared war against us. We. Uh, Everything at that time was set up where, like, you were going from stations, so you had each fighting company, and, like, one of them was a general's battle, and then you'd move up here, and it was, say, like, jugging first to three, and then you'd move over here, and it was an actual traditional bridge battle that was done, uh, militia only, and then you moved to this one, and it was what we called a Pokemon battle, where, like, right. both teams were lined up on the other side, and if Hogman won, then we would just get to pick who we, got, who we sent in. Um, I remember that one oh. specifically because Gowen said... Beefy, we're going to let you win. go in first. Yeah. <laughs> I do not want to fight in this event. And then we just watched as he mowed people down with Slim Jim. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that was one I didn't make, but I still don't think it was Bridge Wars. <clears throat> hey, if you are an older uh, Rising Winds person and you happen to be there for that one, um, post Prove me the, wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, post in the comments what that was, because I think it was a Bridge Wars, but I'm willing to admit that you're wrong. You guys are both um, going about this the wrong way. Here's how you get somebody to tell you what the answer is. I am 100% certain <laughs> with not a doubt in my soul that it was Bridge Wars. I promise everyone listening it was Bridge Wars. Now watch the comments. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Certainty will bring it out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I remember by the end of the day, everyone was ga. It was so hot. We were all dehydrated. I think Zeb passed out or came very close to passing out on the top. He has a history of doing hey, I was going to say the top castle. level of castle is definitely a yeah. history of Zeb because one of the yeah. other times the castle was there he that I was at, he did that too. Yeah. That, that sounds like keep though, not uh, not Bridge Bridge Wars is in November, like the middle of November. This was pre-keep. Be... I mean, this was probably uh, oh, okay. 2006, like 2007 yeah, okay. maybe. 100% Bridge yeah. Wars. <laughs> no question about it. See, yeah, the thing right? is, is people don't want to help you find the answer. They do want you to be wrong. Right. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent sure it was Bridge funny. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I've been convinced it's Bridge Wars. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Um. No, that was a. Uh, uh, there was a lot of really fun things that uh, that happened at uh, that event, and we actually we used to come up to uh, to Winter War all of the time. 
as well. That was like a, a rite of passage for a lot of our new people. I've um, been to three. When you talk about the day, the day event. Yes. In so yeah, yeah I okay. was going to say. Well, it wasn't a day event actually. It was a it was a true weekend event. Um, you know, we have to kind of preface this one because Winter War is now kind of a, a DAG event. I think. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Be, we are talking about a Amp Guard specific event that happened in the Kingdom of Rising Winds. It was yeah, near it, a military place. It was. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember which though. Fort Knox. Yeah, I that's think it. it's Fort Knox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was I'm it. I'm pretty sure you're talking about the Maddox Keep event, uh, which I didn't know they did it in a weekend format. I've only seen it in. Uh, yeah, like I said, it was Winter War at one point, um, and yeah. then after that i don't know exactly what know what happened don't really care it changed basically so yeah yeah i remember the very i was there at the very first one uh because it was in a big huge field like pavilion and then downhill and military base behind it and they had one of the big huge helicopters i don't know military stuff but <laughs> it landed and everyone was like look it's a dragon charge it ah and they started running towards it Ooh. and me and the dude i was standing beside are like those motherfuckers are dead. There's no <laughs> yeah. way that they're coming out of this alive. Wrong this is another happened. Naruto run at Area 51. <laughs> and, like, right. and what happens? But the the military guys that were at the, the uh, helicopter thought it was fucking hilarious, and they came over and started playing. I was like, <laughs> what <laughs> world do we live in that that works? Is that how we yeah. got Larry? No, but it should have been. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> legends are legends. Who's to tell you you're wrong? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> the internet. <laughs> but yeah, so not a big deal to uh, to change. Then, uh, how have our events uh, been? I know that we're uh, we run ourselves a little bit differently. Let than, me help uh, real quick. Too fucking far away. <laughs> <laughs> now hey, I agree with that too. So don't get me wrong. I'm the one running them kind of at the moment. I, I've actually I've been coming down to Winter's Edge events since 2018, probably. Yeah, because yeah, you I were at my a symposium. I was at the Olympia. Oh, the yeah, Olympia the, symposium. Oh yeah, that's, that's where you got the. That's where you got the video that has the subtitle stuff for it was me versus uh 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 Bell B, just B E L uh uh yes. so, yeah. Sons of Terra Bell and like the captions are Bell Sons of Terra really cool group flow kind of fat kind of fat <laughs> 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 didn't even know who you were. I yeah, had no yeah, idea. Yeah. It was the kind. It was the conversation you guys were having, and I. I was like, well, we we're made, about to find out if he has a sense of humor or not because we're rolling. <laughs> we made some. I actually posted in the triad Discord whenever uh, we got done. Ever, I thought it was pretty funny. But yeah, we were having. We were joking around because Bell had been a bigger dude and had just now dropped a lot of weight and i was complimenting yeah. him and he made a joke back to me like yeah maybe someday you'll drop some weight too and i was like oh that hurt <laughs> <laughs> right. Jesus. Yeah. there were there were signals to my uh, off the wall content creation yeah. <laughs> nobody was paying attention <laughs> red flags everywhere <laughs> There's a lot of people that were recording at that Olympiad, if I remember. There's like a couple of different camera setups there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had uh, Gorg was there recording. Mm -hmm. She typically does it on her cell phone. I think, uh, I don't know his game name, Colby Shoot. Uh, I'm Is pretty that sure that was him. I don't, I don't know. know. I think that's Boomy, uh, but I can't remember. He's a DAG player, Belgarth player. Uh, yeah, he's in Nashville, I think. Uh, Andrew Ash or something like that. Ashlands. Ashland Belgarth. Ashlands, that's it. Yeah, that's right. They <laughs> changed. Is his group. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Um, I know that we uh, uh, we had a whole lot of fun at the uh, Avatar event that you guys came down for. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody who says they remember that event wasn't actually there. Okay. <laughs> the fact that you got so drunk that you didn't know which way sideways was does not mean that all the rest <laughs> of us did. The best thing was... This was like a full your your uh, role play the whole time event sort of thing, uh -huh. and he started yeah. giving out drunk quests that people were completing. <laughs> they were they were deeply fucking stupid, like eat an entire head of lettuce. Hey man, you want to earn some honor? Eat this whole cavity. And <laughs> people Go ahead were and eat doing the cabbage, it, buddy. Shout out to Rabbit. He, I, he, I got a he video had a, somewhere. He had a good try at it. <laughs> He said, I can definitely eat that cabbage. I said, bro, do you know how much fiber's in this motherfucker? You are going to die. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, uh, that's also when we did the uh, Phoenix League uh, for the first time, mm -hmm. which we had you guys on for a Phoenix League episode uh, just a little mm -hmm. while ago, uh, too. And we got to do it again at uh, the symposium. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
The field setup was a little weird, and we overdrew power multiple times, and lights got shut down and stuff like that. But that's all part it, of the experience. Is of, it an amp guard night event if you don't, you know, almost set whatever building you're running on fire? At least trip of breaker. You seven. have to yeah. at least yeah. do that. <laughs> How many feet of extension cord? We got I don't here? want to look at it. I know just <laughs> enough that I know it's really bad, and I want to have zero. I, <laughs> to I do actually with that. know the answer to this. 235 feet wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't nine extension cords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I actually know the answer to this one because uh, it was me and Jay and Lexi that were all out there setting up the lights. We had one, two, three, four, five, six lights and probably 700 feet worth of cords set up all, all off of one outlet. And you're talking about the Avatar event. Yeah. No, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. That one was a different one that shut down. I was talking about <laughs> Symposium. Hold on, I got a call. Oh, yeah. It's from fucking OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me. Come with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll be... Jeez. World of OSHA violation. That's a uh, interesting story about the guy that uh, did that mechanic link is his thing. I talked to him quite. He's gonna he is gonna end up coming out to uh, some dagger here events. Oh, oh that's here. really cool. Upon occasion, anyway, he's he's played for a number of years. But yeah, I'm trying to get him to get into uh, some social media stuff with that. He's a car mechanic. Anyway, he's got a great channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely does. <laughs> so. Um, what are some things that you would like to either hype or leave the audience uh, uh, with? We're starting to to get close to time here. About the time to shut it. I don't know, man. I it's the same thing as always. Uh, if you need some help recruiting people, you know, let me know. That's that's what I'm here for. That's that's what I want to do is get more people in. The more people we get in, it it helps feed a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Merchants make money. Uh, parks grow, we get more money to run bigger and better events, uh, all of those things. So, you know, there are people out there that are creating content. I've never heard of a single person tell anybody, no, you link some content. All of my stuff is available. Go to come try LARP on TikTok, download, copy the link to it, go to snaptick.com and then download it without a watermark and put it on your page. Just like it's your content. I don't give a shit. It's make it look native, <laughs> use it, recruit people, have them come in and play. You know, that's, that's, that's the whole name of the game. And there are several content creators out there. If you want to use a piece of content, ask them. I've never heard anybody say no. Yeah, you did a really nice one of Justin punching me in the face that everyone should use. <laughs> as that's their... blocking, man. That's right. You got it. Gotta get creative with it upon occasion. <laughs> that one was funny. Can't be uh, ducking into it like that. <laughs> yeah, right. That one was funny too because he picked that up and uh, I said, uh, "I swear to God, you punched me with that fucking board." And he's like, "He's like, calm down, man. I'm not going to punch you with the board." And what is the very first thing that he does? <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen seconds in. Oh yeah. yeah, I went through the rest of the the tournament tasting blood. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, well, cool. Uh, I want to thank you for coming back on, man, mm -hmm. and talking to us about recruitment again. Uh, just to kind of recap on some of the stuff that we have covered here, because uh, it's been a couple episodes since we did that, and I think it's really useful. Um, look into uh, advertising through Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, Hit me up for that. I'll walk you through how to do it. If you want me to run it, I'm not kidding. If you've got 300 bucks, send me $300. I'm not going to charge you any extra. I will set your Facebook ad up for you. Uh, hit me up, you know, six weeks in advance of the event. We'll we'll start the ad two weeks before the event, but give me some time so I can go ahead and get the thing set up, and then we'll actually start it running two weeks. But I'll set it up for you. You don't even need, but you need to spend about you know two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars to really, I think, make it worth your time. Uh, Use your anyway, go ahead. Sorry, no, 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 you're good. Use your park coffers. Yes, like, straight up. This is yeah. one of the most worthwhile things you can do with them. I feel like it's just pretty rare. And you that might the guest miss throws we... themselves under the bus. <laughs> Yeah, we, we haven't we haven't had an event rain yet that I'm aware of for, for that stuff. You know, that's that's it's coming. Somebody's gonna run an event, they're gonna spend three hundred dollars, and then the weather's gonna be shitty, and then the event is gonna be over with, and they're gonna have nobody there, and Facebook doesn't care, and they're gonna keep your money, and you know, that's gonna happen eventually. But it is there is no better way for you to spend your time and effort and energy in my mind than to run a Facebook ad. Uh and and I'll I'll do all of that scary back end Facebook stuff of getting that set up, get your pictures, get you the copy, the, you know, the words, all that stuff, oh, yeah. everything you need in order to drive traffic to your Facebook page and group for people to show up and play. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Sorry. I'm 
Yeah, no, that, I mean, this... we're trying to wrap up in a family. <clears throat> no, no, no this good. is this is great. <laughs> yeah, I was the, just uh... going hell yeah, like that's awesome. <laughs> um, contact the people, the other parks that are going to be around you. Let them know what's going on. Make this kind of a, a day battle thing uh, for them. Be sure to have uh, water out there for everybody. Be uh-huh. sure to have some extra weapons out there uh, for everybody. If you can, make some really simple stuff like a reeve stick. You don't even have to make it super fancy. I've seen ones that are just literally a piece of PVC that people took, to, uh, you know, pink tape and wrapped it around and left it white and pink. You can do fancier ones if you want. Um, but have stuff like I don't that. Even have, I don't even have reeves, to be honest with you. What, what, I, tell, what I tell everybody to do on these, on these first days, and this, is, this gets back to that whole, you know, when you shake hands with everybody that comes up in that quick little thing, mm-hmm. it, you just let them, hey, if you have any questions, the people running around in funny clothes, they can answer those. So while you're on the field, if you need to know something, just ask those folks. They'll explain it to you. And then, you know, you tell all your park people, hey, don't don't let there be an argument. You know, just say, hey, look, I understand it's a misunderstanding. You know, we'll dive deeper into, you know, the rules at a later time. But, you know, let's go win the game or whatever it is. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and that you, there's no reason to have anybody reaving because yeah, yeah. Mo- most people aren't even going to argue. It, I, I've, I've yet to see a new person argument uh, at any of these events. So it, that's not as an important thing as it is, is make sure everybody has fun and send, make sure they know to ask anybody in garb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, next one was what you just now commented on. Make sure you greet everyone that walks up. Make sure all of the people that are going to be there from have your park point, or from man. other park. Yeah, have a point, man. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, Make sure that as the new people are coming up, the people that are at your park or the guests uh, from other parks that have come up uh, all introduce themselves. Make people feel welcome. Remember how yeah. awkward it, it was for you. You, know, you may be uh, an extrovert uh, like I am, but not everybody is, right? But everybody right. is okay to say hi. You know, hey, what's up? How you doing? Right. right. Um, Especially if you're comfortable. Yeah, I mean, you're you might be in the funny clothes out there that day, but you're going to be in. You you are way more comfortable there than most people are. Unless oh, you're cabbage. absolutely. Cabbage is great. He's Flo a, has absolutely no idea what it's like to be a fucking introvert. I don't. Anybody can say right. hi. No, I don't. It I have, comes at a cost, Flo. I have no idea. <laughs> I I don't know what it's like. Um, but yeah, um. Also, look and uh, reach out to people that may have done it. You know, if you know so, if you know of somebody else in your kingdom or another kingdom that has run something like uh, Everliving Woods did or Come Try LARP, ask them advice. See what worked and didn't work. I'm sure that they'll be happy to share it with you. That's probably going to be a really big one because there's some games that are definitely going to be better to run than others. Um, yeah. and, and keeping it simple is probably best. Ca- literally capture the flag, team deathmatch for ditch and then you know we play a kill your killer or or we call it escort to payload because of uh what the hell is it overwatch yeah yeah they have an escort right so it's really very heavy object but we just call it escort the payload you know i mean just just to so they have something to reference it to everybody might not know what that is but this kind of goes back to portion of our demographic has seen what that is yeah this kind of goes back to to maybe we as a, a whole like as a whole as amp guard might need to look at our jargon and try to to use it as use more like video gaming names and stuff like that for stuff because that way whenever we introduce it everyone understands at a level what it means pretty easily right. yeah i don't i don't know that we change it as a I, I, it'll be hard i think to change as a culture but i think it is a noble and worthwhile effort to definitely uh, you try not to cuss around the kids at the playground, right? Mm-hmm. Same kind yeah. of thing. You just, you know, when you're there with a bunch of new people, just try not to fall into that lingo too much. Mm-hmm. You know, try to, you know, baby explain it, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Too. Right. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I, I think that that will get you started, if not get you set on uh, a path towards this. If it's something that you are interested in trying out, uh, we think everybody should. Again, links will be down in the bottom. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank all of our listeners and everyone who has supported the podcast in any way. If you'd like information on how to support us, either financially as a Patreon uh, or just by clicking that like and subscribe button, you can find all of that down below. Uh, anything else, guys? I got to unplug my website, stickdork.com. If you need foam for your park, we sell park foam. Both oh. 20 pieces. Oh, yeah. 20 this is pieces. a new thing. 46 and a half inches long, 
uh, two and a half inches wide, half inch hole. Uh, we sell it 20 pieces at a time, $6 a stick. You can make uh, two short swords out of it. And yeah, you'll yeah, probably be stuff. hearing from me soon. Yeah. yeah stick, <laughs> stickdork.com. Stickdork.com. Thanks. Good Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's it. I think we're good. Yeah. Roll that uh, outro. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on YouTube or Spotify to get notified about new episodes. And make sure to follow us on Facebook for announcements and more.